Hello fans and welcome to the simulated FPHL playoffs presented by underreview.org. I'm Zach McGinnis and tonight, round one, game two between the Elmira Enforcers and the Delaware Thunder. The Enforcers hold a 1-0 series lead and they have the opportunity to close out the Delaware Thunder on the Thunder's home ice. Courtesy of last night's 8-5 victory, plenty of goals scored in that game. Stepan Timofeyev with a goal and two assists was named the first star of the game. Neither goaltender really happy with their performances as Aaron Taylor surrendered eight goals on 29 shots. Troy Passingham of Elmira, he surrendered a few goals, five in total on 40 shots, so better numbers for Passingham. Elsewhere around the simulated FPHL playoffs, down in Carolina, the Thunderbirds with a 4-1 to victory over the Columbus River Dragons. Down in the Hat City, the Danbury Hattricks, another goal fest, a 7-4 victory over the Watertown Wolves. And in overtime, the Port Huron Prowlers, a 2-1 to victory over the Danville Dashers. Keep in mind, folks, this round and, well, all rounds in the FPHL playoffs are only a best of three, as next weekend we'll get through to the divisional finals now before we get started a couple quick shout outs and hellos first we'd like to say hello to mikey and john the usual broadcasters for delaware and elmira hope you gentlemen are doing fine at home as for my usual broadcast partners jack o'mara he's at home with his family in new milford jack hope everything's going well and casey bryant well he's doing all right yeah. Before the last game, he wanted to send up a prayer for the hamster wheel that is powering my house. I am happy to report that I now have two hamsters and double the power. So now that's all, all that's out of the way. Let's get down to action. Let's hit the loading screen. Delaware and Elmira coming up next. Live from a safe distance, Center Ice Arena in Harrington, Delaware. It's the Delaware Thunder hoping to keep their playoff hopes alive against the Elmira Enforcers. Thanks so much for tuning on in, folks. I'm Zach McGinnis. Troy Passingham recorded the win yesterday, not with the best of numbers, giving up five goals on 40 shots. Aaron Taylor, his numbers weren't any better. As a matter of fact, they were much worse. We'll see how Taylor can settle down in the simulated crease. Delaware in their home dark uniforms, black with the silver and white trim. They'll skate from left to right on your screens at home as we're under way in round one game two between these two teams it'll be charlie Penns jr who starts us off quick shot on goal fought off by passingham delaware has started hot the last few games against elmira they'll need that hot start once again as they have not been able to keep the pace throughout the game timofeyev goes back to yarwood at the point now jurich yarwood again sled down low for timofeyev jurich knocked off of his stick and Timofeyev unable to get the puck, but then a big hit jostles it loose. Here's Timofeyev again. He'll take a shot in the corner. Pench Jr. will take the puck away and slide it along for Devine. Devine found himself in the penalty box at the end of yesterday's game as Pence Jr. gives along for Moskal. Moskal knocked off the puck. Now Demon. Devine. He'll wrap one around the boards. Intended for Parker Moskal. He's pressed up against the boards by Glenn Patterson. Demon. A centering attempt intercepted and the enforcers are able to clear. Over three minutes gone by in the first as Tyler Jurich launches a shot into the glove of Aaron Taylor and he'll hold on. Now you get a look at the Delaware bench. First professional hockey team to call a Delaware home. Center Ice Arena normally only holds about 1,000 people, including standing room. Also the home of Salisbury University's club teams. Back in the day, they only had one. Now they've got a couple. Here's Minicello along for Kalinin. Kalinin pressed up against the boards by Stevens. Loose puck behind the net. Simonetta tried a wraparound attempt. That couldn't get through. Here's Dunford at the red line. Municello, now Walters. Pass intercepted by Simonetta. He finds Municello into the Elmira zone. Loose puck. Who has it? It's Municello. Gives back to Dunford. Dunford's pass broken up. And now one-on-one -on -one come the enforcers the other way. 
Shot was blocked. Mark Estery leading the rush. Can't get a shot on goal. Litke, fresh off the bench, gives to Dunford and now Municello into the Elmira zone. He finds Tondal with a shot saved by Passingham. Has Patrick Tondal with a nice opportunity. Here's Dunford. Gets around the four checker. Tondal a backhand shot. And that goes off the pad of Passingham and cleared out of the zone. Delaware again getting the opportunities early, but Troy Passingham, 6 foot 5, 215 pounds. That is a lot of goaltender to try and get a puck around. I don't care how simulated this is. Here's Municello once again on a long shift. Gives along Tondal another opportunity. Uh, handcuffed on the play as the puck goes into the corner. Now Simonetta. Municello is shot. Passingham steers it aside. Harrison comes around for Hussey. Delaware in the middle of a change as Elmira finishes the puck. Here's Hussey again. That shot's blocked by Paisano. Anthony Paisano, perhaps the biggest player in the FPHL, picks up the puck and he'll lead things forward. Paisano, top of the circle, into the corner. A centering attempt off the pads of Passingham. Hussey's able to get it as far as the red line. Basie. Nearly has a stick lifted by Novacell. Novacell comes up with the puck and finds Babanko. Babanko, as everything gets a little pixelated. Boy, hard for Aaron Taylor to track the puck when you can't even see it. Here is Jordan Clark. He finds Seth Bacon a shot into the glove of Passingham. And Passingham will hold on. We have seen lots of this fourth line from Delaware. Bacon, Cooksmith, and Jordan Clark. As we get a couple replays of the saves that Troy Passingham has made on the opportunities by Patrick Tondal. But getting back to Center Ice Arena, yeah, I give a lot of credit to Charlie Penn Sr. and the rest of the staff with the Delaware Thunder. They have done a fantastic job in what isn't an easy rink to operate in simply because it doesn't have that many seats. I remember playing there in college and to think that it's a professional rink now, you know, it's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes for the Thunder. Of course, with things being simulated, now it's an 18,000-seat arena, and, well, that makes it the largest arena in Delaware. Nice job, boys. 12 minutes gone by in the first. Puck in the referee circle and sent on down by the Thunder. Chasing after this and getting there first is Matthews. He's bumped off the puck quickly by Aaron Cook-Smith. Now the enforcers once again through the neutral zone. This is Stevens. Stevens turns, look, takes a shot, saved by Taylor. It drops in front of him and he'll hold on. As the simulated Aaron Taylor has had trouble with his rebounds. We saw Tyler Jurich score a goal yesterday based off of that loose rebound. And again, you see the puck dropping right in front of a net. And on the doorstep, Hudson Michaelis looking for a tap-in, but none to be had. Now 13 minutes gone by in a scoreless first period. Boy, the first period moves much faster when you don't have five goals scored. And in yesterday's first period, all those goals seem to come one right after the other. 13 seconds between one goal, 26 seconds between the next. And those are simulated seconds, so you know it was even faster. Here's Licky. Into the Elmira zone. Licky, top of the slot, gives along Dunford. Dunford around the corner. Brian Dunford and then sends one in front. And unable to get a stick on it was Municello. Now Babanko picking up a loose puck behind his own net. Fed along and driven ahead by Brendan Hussey. Hussey had a goal in yesterday's game. He finds Babanko in the slot. Babanko elects not to take the shot. Hussey picks up the puck. Turning in the corner, now going back up to the point. He finds Novacell a shot. Great opportunity, but a better save. Novacell picks up his own rebound. Tries going back to the point. That pinballs its way out of the zone where Gino Mini will get the puck back from JT Walters. Now Babanko. Three on two are the enforcers. Babanko electing just to hold on to it. He finds Mini given to Novacell. Mini again. Oh boy, here comes all the passing. Timofeyev, Mini. Mini bumped off of the puck by Evgeny Demin. Mini picks it up again. He finds Babanko, whose shot gets blocked in front of the cage. Brian Dunford getting in the way. Now Christers Bormanis. First line back out on the ice for the Thunder as Bormanis. Plenty of stick handling, and then he forgot what he was doing. Timofeyev picks up the puck and takes it the other way. Under two to play in the first. Here's Jurich driving behind the net. Jurich tripped up on the play. That's going to result in a penalty. Jurich gives back to Mini. Mafuz, a weak backhander, and then Licky gets a stick on it. 
And boy, it's a good thing Bryce Lickey got a stick on it when he did, because if that whistle didn't blow, it would have been a little interesting. Alex Basie will sit two minutes for tripping. And so we get to see the Elmira Enforcers power play for the first time today. They connected twice in yesterday's game. Ahmed Mafuz, Tyler Jurich, Stepan Timofey of the first line for the Enforcers out on the ice. Glenn Patterson at the point. He's paired up with Cameron Yarwood who takes the shot and Taylor will hold on. Cameron Yarwood has made a nice little career for himself here in the FPHL. Bounced around a couple times, but certainly a blue line stalwart. 50-50 draw. Timofey have had a stick on it. Collected by the Thunder and they'll dump it all the way down. Minute remaining. Troy passing him out of the cage. He plays it in that trapezoidal area. So looks as though the rules have changed between the first and second games. No surprise. Glenn Patterson up from a foos and a weak flip shot shrugged aside by Taylor. Now this is Timofey at the blue line. All over him is Parker Moskal and Moskal rather than well, trying to keep things going, he elects to dump it on down. Five seconds to go now. We've seen plenty of goals scored in the last 10 seconds. Hudson Michaelis will need to take a shot. Instead, he finds Timofeyev who wraps one wide. And that'll do it for the first period. So at the end of one, it's Delaware nothing. Elmira nothing. Seemed to be a pretty even period between the two teams. Elmira, I imagine, has the advantage when it comes to puck possession. We'll get the stats to pop up in just a moment. As you see, a couple of nice saves by both goaltenders. And Taylor, yeah, perhaps he is a steel wall. Not sure if that's his nickname, but we can roll with it. Let's take a look at those stats. Yep, Elmira with the better time on possession. And, well, I didn't even get a chance to take a look at the shots at goal. On goal, I hope you did at home as, again, Center Ice Arena looking beautiful on the Delaware State Fairgrounds. Problem with Harrington is that it isn't by many population centers. I remember, again, in college going there to play Salisbury. It seemed like we were surrounded by cornfields as Tyler Jurich with a shot. Gets deflected into the corner. Second period underway. Devine just barely gets it over the blue line. Glenn Patterson unable to hold it in with his six foot four frame. Big hit in the corner. Jurich comes up with the puck. Timofeyev for Mafuz. Back to Patterson. Now Mafuz again. Patterson, Mafuz in front. Devine breaks it up. Penalty has expired. We're back to five aside hockey. Patterson pressed up against the boards. Coming up with the puck is Basie out of the penalty box and he clears it as far as the red line. Now Patterson coming back the other way with a head of steam. Scores! Glenn Patterson snaps one past the blocker side of Aaron Taylor. And the Elmira enforcers have a 1-0 lead. Ahmed Mafuz will pick up the lone assist, but it's all Glenn Patterson as he has plenty of space and he goes short side on Aaron Taylor. That's a puck that Taylor sees all the way. Kieran Devine getting beaten to the outside. But for Glenn Patterson, it's his first gold in the playoffs and the Elmira Enforcers with the 1-0 lead and they are about 38 minutes away from punching their ticket to the Eastern Division Finals. Parker Moskal looking to respond. We'll see how the Thunder respond. They did a great job of that yesterday. They'll need to get possession of the puck first, though, as it's Mark Essery back into the Delaware zone. He finds Gino Mini with a drive blocked in front as there was a quote-unquote steel wall in front of Aaron Taylor. Now Stevens. Ahead for Michaelis, and now Essery. Mark Essery, nice dipsy-doodle move, has the puck knocked off of his stick as he tried to get around Licky. Thunder up ahead. This is Davidson. He had an assist yesterday. Davidson into the corner. Surrounded by a pair of enforcers. Lost possession of the puck. Wrapped around the boards and it'll be picked up by Mark Essery with speed into the Delaware zone. Essery again with that toe drag move. This time not as successful. Hudson Michaelis turns around, takes the shot. It's blocked. Brian Dunford, the defenseman, will lead things the other way. He finds Taylor cutting. Now Dunford again for Tondal. Cutting. And fanning on the shot was Dunford as it was poked away. He picks up the loose puck, sends it on goal, and Passingham has to turn to his right to make the save. Now well, we got to take a look at the top four in a plus minus. We mentioned Cameron Yarwood before being a bit of a defensive stalwart. Plus four in a single game, that's not bad. Now here's Tucker. 
for the enforcers. Brandon Tucker, his shot knocked aside. Zach Peace will pick it up. Peace has been so dangerous. He comes into this game riding a two-game goal streak, but his goals have all been big. Carter a shot from the point. Fended off by Taylor. Picked up by Seth Bacon. Paisano up ahead. Into the zone come the Thunder as it's Aaron Cook-Smith. Given for Bacon a one-timer, and that's blocked aside. You know, you're seeing both teams really collapse in in front of the goal with their defensemen. It's preventing many goals or many shots from getting on goal. At the same time, it screens the goaltenders. But again, it's a video game. Perhaps the goaltenders can see through bodies. Bacon picks up the puck. Hussey for Babenko. Tries going short side on the glove hand. And Aaron Taylor gets the shoulder up to make the save. Yeah, that's one thing that I've noticed with these games, especially with the Delaware Thunder. They have their fourth line out. An awful amount of time. You figure that these lines are eh, kind of built based off of the player's uh, skill level, attributes, whatever you want to call it in the virtual world. As Yarwood gives along for Patterson, but you see that fourth line out there a lot. And Seth Bacon especially. Again, it's weird seeing a forward wear number one. I can't think of well, anybody at the professional level who has worn number one as a forward. I'm sure there's been at least one or two. Har, har, har. Here's Babanko giving along for JT Walters. Fresh off the bench, a backhand shot into the glove of Taylor. He'll hold on for a whistle. Halfway through the second period, only one goal scored so far off the stick of Glenn Patterson. Elmira clinging to this one goal lead, although perhaps clinging isn't the right turn of phrase as they have certainly had the puck in Delaware's zone for most of this period. Here's Minnie, Timofeyev, Jurich. He's knocked down, but then quickly back up to his feet. Pence Jr. along for Davidson. And Davidson will get it over the red line and into Elmira's end. Davidson got around a defender and then decided to taunt him a little bit. Didn't take that open space in front of him. Timofeyev. And Mini up ahead further. This is Tyler, or no, check that. That's Ahmed Mafuz. You know, Mafuz got an assist on Glenn Patterson's goal as a one-timer by Jurich is stopped by Taylor. But Mafuz hasn't done much in the goal scoring department. He has certainly been more of a distributor. As we get a whistle off the save from Zach Peace's shot. Nice thing about the way we're running this now in the playoffs is we'll finally have stats that compile along the way. And so we'll get to see exactly how bad or how good these goaltenders' uh, stats end up being. Off the draw, it's controlled by the Thunder. Bormanis up ahead, off the stick of Moskal, turned over. Bormanis gets it back and he gives to Moskal. Parker Moskal along for Evgeny Demin, a shot. Great save by Passingham. Passingham might have used some of that dark magic we saw Joe Young use earlier in the regular season. Manages to keep it out. Basie a shot, and that's kicked aside by Passingham as well. Best offensive shift so far this period by Delaware. Bormanis causes a turnover in the corner. Matthews is able to recover. Harrison gives along for Carter. Now Carter up ahead. Spencer Carter fed it along. It rolls in on goal. Taylor made the save animation. Not sure if he needed to, but either way, he gets a glove on it. And the faceoff will be to his right with 4.54 to go in the second period as we get another opportunity to take a look at that Evgeny Demin shot. As Demin, well, that's where you want to shoot the puck. Not sure if you want to go across the body. Although perhaps if you can get Passingham sliding against his own momentum... You have a better shot for a goal. Another offensive zone faceoff. Another win for the Thunder. Patterson, D to D across for Yarwood. Patterson will now come over to Yarwood's side. More passing. Stevens to Patterson. Now Yarwood, Michaelis, Stevens, Patterson. A drive saved by Taylor, and he'll hold on. Wait, there are more D to D passes in this game that we see in a single shift than perhaps you see all game in real life. Another offensive zone faceoff with under four to go in the second. Delaware needs a victory here on home ice. 
to force game three back in Elmira, which will be tomorrow if we get that far. Here's Simonetta looking to tie things up. Simonetta stops, looks at his options, gave back to Divine. Divine stripped to the puck by Stevenson. He gives up ahead. Two on two into the Delaware zone as Hudson Michaelis will now send it behind the cage. Kalinin cuts it off, gives to Municello, who gets blown up by Glenn Patterson. Puck still in the Delaware zone. Patterson a drive shot saved by Taylor. The rebound by Michaelis, another save. Now Michaelis again gives back Yarwood. Walters a drive. That's stopped by Taylor. He can't control the rebound. His defenseman can. 90 seconds to go in the period. Losing possession of the puck was Mark Anthony Simonetta. Along the boards, the enforcers managed to break things up, and then that puck goes right under the stick of Aaron Cook-Smith. Once again, that fourth line out on the ice. A one-timer great save by Taylor, and he'll hold on. Right, a bit of a mismatch skill-wise out on the ice as it's the first line for Elmira with Tyler Jurich and Ahmed Mafuz up against the fourth line of Delaware as we get a replay of Hudson Michaelis' shot. And that's exactly how the Delaware coaching staff will keep things out. So Aaron Cooksmith, Ahmed Mafuz, big face-off here for the Thunder, and Cooksmith wins it. Well, perhaps the simulated coach knew something that I didn't. Unable to clear are the Thunder as Jurich keeps it alive. Now here's Jordan Clark. Clark leading things himself. Two seconds and one, and he won't get a shot on goal. That'll do it for the second period in what has been a very different game than yesterday's affair. Elmira with a 1-0 lead as they go back to the locker room. And 20 minutes perhaps remaining in Delaware's season. They'll need to dig deep and find another gear to try and beat Troy Passingham. And with the second period, we get to take a look at the stats. Time on attack is heavily in Elmira's favor. So are the shots, so are the shots on goal, 19 to 11, in favor of the enforcers. And quite frankly, that does not count all the blocked shots in front as well. Elmira has dominated on the faceoff circle as well, nine to six that advantage. Make it 10 as Ahmed Mafuz gets us started here in the third period. That was one thing that Delaware had working for them yesterday was they were very strong in the face-off circle. Tyler Jurich's shot finds its way into the webbed hand of Aaron Taylor. He'll hold on. I'm not sure if it's this game in the NHL series that allows for playoff beards to grow out over the course of the playoff season. We'll have to keep an eye on that as things progress. Here's Timofeya back for Patterson. He'll send one around the boards. All the way along for Yarwood. That's a new way of going D to D. Patterson with it again. Mafuz for Jurich in the slot. Jurich doesn't take the shot. Timofeyev had it for an, a moment. Divine breaks it up. Timofeyev gives it back. Yarwood. His drive. Shot. Saved. Rebound. Another great save by Aaron Taylor. Yarwood again. That one deflects wide. Boy, Aaron Taylor has... Certainly made some big saves. He'd still like that shot from Glenn Patterson back once again as Bormanis' shot is punched aside by Passingham. Now Essery, Timofeyev, a one-timer, steered aside once again. Timofeyev picks up the puck. A sent in front. Contact with the goaltender. The Elmira coaching staff says it's fine. Certainly not worth a penalty. And this time the referees agree. Timofeyev, another shot and another save by Aaron Taylor. Essery turning with it. He finds Timofeyev. That one gets deflected wide. Patterson at the point for Yarwood. Off the boards, Essery. Now Yarwood and Patterson again. Patterson fans on the shot. He's tripped up on the play. And that will result in a penalty. Patterson a shot into the, well, what would normally be a, eh, what do you call that? A Thunderman? At least here, it's a, certainly a wizard with, well, I'd get... My liver checked out if my face was that yellow. But you see Patterson tripped up at the point. So Thomas Municello will sit two minutes for tripping. And the Elmira Enforcers already holding a 1-0 lead have the opportunity to double up on that. At the very least, they'll have the chance to take more precious time off the clock for the Thunder. Here's Walters starting from 200 feet away. Essery into the neutral zone. Top of the circle, Essery a shot, fended off. Rebound picked up by Michaelis. He goes back to Minnie. 
Intended back for Esser. He cleared out of the zone, but not very far. Courtesy of Litke. Now turning with it is Stevens. He can't take the shot. Stevens with it again. Dunford, this time, he presses the right buttons and flips it all the way down. 35 to go on Elmira's second power play. They're 0 for 1 so far. Into the Delaware zone, it's Michaelis. Mini, a drive staved by Taylor, and he'll hold on. Well, Aaron Taylor has certainly made some big saves here in the third period, and we see a couple of them here as the production truck at NBC Sports has certainly stepped their game up. I'm sure Aaron Taylor is quite appreciative of that. 12 to go on the power play. It's Mafuz on the draw for Elmira. One by Parker Moskal. Taylor lets it go. Not sure why he would do that. Basie's able to send it down. The power play has expired. And we're back to five-a-side hockey. 13 minutes remaining in regulation time. Delaware needs one to tie. Into the zone, it's Parker Moskal. He sends one in front for Municello, but a nice save by Passingham. Passingham might have gotten a glove on the rebound. Moskal gives back Dunford and Paisano. Tries threading it down low for Bormanis, intercepted, and the enforcers are able to clear. Here's Tyler Jurich on his backhand. Gives to Mafuz. Timofey of a shot saved by the goaltender. And let's go the other way. Here's Jordan Clark. Clark a shot. Saved by Passingham. He'll hold on. Boy, Jordan Clark had two goals in yesterday's game. Unfortunately, they came once the game was well out of reach. You figure he'll want to get some simulated revenge on his old teammates as we see a kick save by Troy Passingham. But once again, it'll be the fourth line of Delaware. Bacon, Cooksmith, and Clark out on the ice. Andrew Harrison on the draw for Elmira. It's won by Clark Smith. Back to Litke. Litke gives along for Clark. Now Litke again. Across Dunford. Litke. A drive saved by Passingham. And Troy Passingham will hold on. Interesting little bit of about Troy Passingham. Other than how tall he is. Native of Missaugua, Ontario. And he was actually signed by the Danbury Titans. Back in the day, and that was an August signing, and about two weeks later, the Titans ceased to be. They were no more. Here's Dunford. Along for Licky and back to Dunford. Oh, they'll just keep playing catch at the blue line. Licky a shot saved by Passingham. He'll hold on. Passingham has certainly come into his own as a goaltender since graduating college. Always good to see the goaltender succeed. Fourth line stays out on the ice for Delaware as it's Cook Smith on the draw, winning it back to Licky. Licky with the drive. Kick save by Troy Passingham. Taken away by the enforcers. Up ahead, it's Kyle Stevens. Getting handcuffed on the shot was Andrew Harrison. Zach Peace picks up the loose puck in the corner, knocked off his stick by Licky, and he finds Dunford. Dunford further up ahead, Simonetta. Simonetta into the zone. He finds Jordan Clark. Clark should have taken the shot. And that's the other problem that we've seen with Delaware. They pass when they should shoot. They shoot when they should pass. And they aren't winning right now. Under eight to play. Perhaps in Delaware season. Basie. This rolls in on goal. Taylor quickly gets it going. And Simonetta up ahead. He finds Kalinin. Now Simonetta again. Two on three come the Thunder into the zone. Simonetta gets around a defenseman, goes behind the net, gives back to the point. Shot by Licky into the glove and out of it just as quickly by Passingham. Now under seven to play. Here is Hussey. Brandon Hussey attempted to send one through the slot. Kalinin managed to get a stick on it. Nova Cell still battling for it, comes up with it. Nova Cell's shot is blocked. Rebound picked up a Banco, a drive saved by Taylor. Again, the rebounds. Dangerous areas, but a good job by Delaware's defense to clear it out. Now Simonetta, he gets crunched up against the boards by Cameron Yarwood. That frees the puck up. Elmira has stayed out of the penalty box so far. They'll need to stay disciplined with under five minutes to play. They are that close to punching their ticket to the Eastern Division Finals as this shot by Hussey goes behind the net of Taylor. Now cutting. 
Tondal, Davidson, first time we've seen this line on the ice in the third period. Davidson with under four to play in the corner. Has an option and Tondal tries giving it to him. Intercepted by Patterson and he gives up to Zach Peace the other way. Zach Peace into the zone. He finds Patterson. Patterson tries giving back to Peace. Eventually finds Minnie. Gino Minnie. Hudson Michaelis. Minnie a drive. He scores! Gino Minnie! And with 2.50 to go in the third period, the Elmira Enforcers have a 2-0 lead. Glenn Patterson picks up the secondary assist as it's only Elmira defensemen who are scoring today. Gino Mini picked up by Elmira off of the Battle Creek Rumblebees. And, you know, if, if you're on the Rumblebees, you figure after a month or two, you figure you're not going to see the playoffs. Gino Mini finds himself in a better position. And now he has perhaps given his simulated team the key that they need to punch their ticket into the next round. You know, I feel like I've overused punch your ticket. You figure these days everything's an app anyway. Under two minutes to play. Stevens. Pass went to nobody in particular. Picked up by Devine. 90 seconds to go. Big hit at the blue line, but the Thunder keep possession. Moskal gives along for Bormanis. Bormanis finds Evgeny Demon. Shot on goal. Saved by Passingham. As Parker Moskal was on the doorstep, he might have gotten a stick on it. But Passingham doing a great job keeping his pads low to the ice. Keeping that five hole shut. Six skaters on the ice for Delaware with a minute two to go. Parker Moskal on the draw. He gives back Penn's junior shot. That one deflects on goal as well. And Passingham still makes the save. Well, Delaware finally getting pucks on goal. And doing a good job of making things as difficult as possible for the goaltender. But Troy Passingham has been strong. Parker Moskal, Ahmed Mafuz, another important draw for the Thunder. This time it's 50-50, picked up by Mini, but intercepted. Divine a shot, that's blocked. Timofeyev, empty net for Delaware. Elmira keeping, well, unable to get it out of their zone. Divine stepping in, a shot, he scores! Kieran Divine! And the Cinderella story isn't over yet, it's 2-1. to one. Another defensive goal in this game. As we see Devine juke his way around the Elmira forward and blast one past Passingham. That might have actually gone off of Gino Mini in front of a net as you see him slam his stick down on the ice. But don't count the Thunder out yet. 44.4 seconds to go. And Delaware still needs one to tie. Let's see if they can do it. Divine stays on the ice. Everybody's still on the ice for both these teams as Divine will send it down deep. Passingham misses the puck in the corner. Here's Gino Mini. Up ahead for Ahmed Mafuz. Delaware was in the middle of a change. No four checkers. Terrible coaching. And Taylor stays in goal. Now a drive off the stick is blocked. Here come the Thunder with 20 seconds to go. Aaron Taylor to the bench for perhaps the last time this season. It's Patrick Tondal in such an important spot. He's in the corner. What's he doing? Tondal still has the puck. 10 seconds to go. Still in the corner. What are you doing? Tondal gets hooked on the play. And if that was his plan, he wasted about 25 seconds. But with 7.4 seconds to go, the Delaware Thunder will have perhaps one face-off, one opportunity to keep their season alive as JT Walters will sit in the box. Parker Moskal is tasked with this draw. He goes up against Brendan Tucker. Tucker manages to tie up Moskal, taken by Yarwood. He dumps it on down, and the Elmira Enforcers are through to the Eastern Division Finals. A heartbreaking loss for the Delaware Thunder. They played much better defensively in this game compared to last night's affair. But the fans here at the Center Ice Arena will go home disappointed as the Delaware Thunder season has come to a conclusion. But what a season it's been. At one point, left for dead. They, well, got on their horses 
and made a go of it. They managed to to pass the Mentor Icebreakers in the last weekend of the regular season. But the Elmira Enforcers, who seemingly cannot lose, will get to take the simulated bus ride back home to Shimon County and the Queen City. They'll get to relax as the Danbury Hattricks and Watertown Wolves, the winner of that series, awaits the Elmira Enforcers, and the Enforcers will have home ice advantage for that series. So that'll just about wrap things up for us here. You get a look at the three stars of the game, and Aaron Taylor certainly bouncing back from yesterday's performance, but it's not enough as the Thunder fall to the Elmira Enforcers by a score of 2-1. to one. So, for everybody with underreview.org who makes this happen, especially Graham Tucky has done some fantastic work, give him a follow on Twitter, at the underreview. You can also give me a follow as well. My name's Zach McGinnis. You can find me at Zach McGinnis, as I am very original, you can tell. But that'll wrap things up for us. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next week in the Divisional Finals.